Hey, what's up everyone? Adobe Masters here, and today I'm gonna to be teaching you about the Lumetri Scopes tab. So to get to the Lumetri Scopes, the easiest way is just to click on the Color tab up here, and it'll bring up the Color tab um, Studio. Um, basically what this is, is Adobe has just rearranged everything so that they think it'll be optimum for color. You can mess with this, you can even open some of this stuff up in editing, like for example, if we wanted to open up Lumetri Scopes here, we just go down here. Um, go window, go down to Lumetri Scopes, and open it up right here. We're going to, however, do it over here in the color panel. And we're going to make this just a little bit bigger. As you can see, they've already opened up Lumetri Color on the right, and then we've opened up the scopes over here. If we double-click, it'll just keep moving them all one by one um, across here. So if you just track one, you can see it goes like this. Um, if you right-click here, you can bring up stuff and make things disappear. So, for example, if we just went like this and then change the waveform back to RGB. Then we have um, the first one that we're gonna talk about, and that is the waveform. And the waveform tells you the colors um, in the image at the certain locations. So what I mean by this is if you see right here, uh, there's some peaking colors. Uh, basically every color in the book is peaking right up here, and that kind of corresponds with right up here where the sky is basically blown out because you have to have a really nice camera to be able to capture the light down here and the sky at the same time. So most cameras, it'll blow out the sky, and you can see there it hits the 100 mark, which means it just can't collect any more detail on it. And if you look over here to the right, we have a little bit of red right here, and that corresponds with the red right here. We have kind of um, a red you know like a line of red going through here starting low and going high and that can be you know maybe these signs right here that are a little orange the the red in this uh the whole building as a whole has a little bit of red because it is an orangish color and so you can really get a good feel of the the color in the footage from this right here and you can really see it is if we let's go ahead and actually just unlink this audio because it just it's not really not really important. Um, if you move it across, you can see there's actually movement over here. And if you notice these two blobs, and then there's going to be one coming down here, it corresponds to this person, this person, and this person. And you can see that they are um, imitations of color, and it's representing them moving across the screen as they go around. And you can really see the movement in the screen as well. You can see this really colorful, we're going to come back to this a lot because it's a very strong color in this scene. You can see it represented right here in this color. And so why this is important is because you can see what you need to manipulate to make big changes. The white is the brightness in the scene as well. So you can see that if we make manipulations to the low end of colors, it'll do a lot more than if we make manipulations to the high end of colors. And you can see we see a lot of red here. So if we make manipulations to red, it'll make a lot bigger changes. And we can see maybe... Um, up here, um, you can see kind of the white kind of corresponds. They're both actually kind of balanced up here. You could actually almost probably bring up the magenta a little bit. Maybe. And try to get those up there to match. Because that is pure white up there. So we can actually use this to almost a white balance. But it's probably going to need to use the keyboard here. And then hold control. And we just kind of dial it in. Right there is where they switch. So we kind of can correct the tint of the white balance like this. And you can see that as we manipulate things over here, it's going to manipulate the colors over here. So now let's just go ahead and open them all up, and we'll start going through them all. So we have five main tabs that we can bring up. Up here was our waveform. And then on the bottom right here, we have our parade. Um, and if you can go, the waveform and the parade have other things that you can change. So we can go to the parade and we can make this RGB as well. And that's basically this, but separated into three different columns. So it pulls out the reds and sticks it here, pulls out the greens, pulls out the blues and sticks it here. And then it just removes the, the white, the luma from it. And so you can really start to see maybe some patterns in here. Now this is a very neutrally lit um, piece of footage. What I mean by that is that, as you can see, all the colors are almost exactly the same throughout the footage. They have the same general shapes. If you're shooting, like, a blue ocean without any, maybe, yeah, a blue ocean with some greenery around it, these two will all be way different than the red because there just isn't a lot of red in the scene. But since everything is kind of blending in this city, you can see that most of them are exactly the same. There are some, you know, slight differences, like there's a little bit of red here where there's, um not as much green and there's no blue in that area so kind of shows 
that sort of, you know, that combination there. And that's really helpful to target certain colors and to figure out what colors are really being represented in your scene. Next over here we have the histogram and this really shows the colors and how they're being distributed um, with intensity. So 255s on all three of them up here are the max colors that you can get. So 255, 255, 255 is pure white and then 000 is pure black. And so anything in between is just a mixture of this. Um, if we actually move this dial over here, we can see that the max numbers start to, to lower. So the blues and the greens stay the same, but since we started pushing so heavily into the blue temperature, the reds have actually gone down. So 206 is now its max, meaning that everything is going to become a lot more blue because we've basically created a cap for the reds. Reset this here. And what this is good for is it actually allows you to see kind of where the distribution of color is in accordance to the light as well. So for example, right here, you can see that most of the color is actually on the lower end and the mid-tones. There isn't much in the highlights. And if we went into something like curves, went into the reds, and we manipulated, let's make one in the middle, manipulated the bottom here, we're going to see some sort of intense colors come about. Um, some really sharp things, and it can be really quickly you know, blown out too far. However, if we go in the highlights here, there's almost no change at all. We can do a lot up here, and it won't actually manipulate anything because it isn't manipulating the majority of the shot. You can see it's only you know doing that up there, and we can actually you know drag the reverses on here and actually get a kind of a cool um, image here, kind of a cool filter there. And if you see that you know like oh I could actually manipulate the highlights one direction and the lowlights and midtones a different direction, and it'll come out pretty cool because you won't have a really strong you know attack of one another, but you'll have a really nice coloring and then a accent at the top. So that's kind of what you can do with the, the histogram. Um, you can use it for a lot of different things, but color grading is one of the cool things to do with it. We're going to keep it right there. It looks kind of cool. Up here you have, I believe this one is the vector scope. Yeah, hue. No, no, no. This one is the YUV. Um, and what YUV is, make sure, yeah. Um, y stands for luma and UV is chroma. So what this is doing, and it's basically these two go in line, their shapes are generally the same, this is just sort of a different version of it, is it shows how much of a certain color you have in a shot. Um, farther you get out to the edge, the more of that color there is. And if you can see, so right here, it's kind of all balanced. We have a little bit pushing towards the reds, maybe back here, and there's a couple of really strong red elements in here. But watch the yellow, watch right here as we move forward right when we get over into the yellow of that nice little pavilion and from the donut shop there, it really shoots out and you can see we have a lot more yellow in this footage than we did before. And so you could use this to start manipulating colors, especially on this color wheel. So if we wanted to kind of bring this all back to together, I don't know, maybe we could kind of desaturate that yellow a little bit, bring that out a little bit more, desaturate it. And you can see right now we're manipulating the yellow on here and right here it has disappeared. It's, it's a lot more neutral and doesn't pop as much anymore. So you wouldn't even think that it's you know as yellow as it is. And we kind of were able to target that through this right here. So that's what these two right here kind of do. They show um, the relationship. The other one, this one's hue, luma, and saturation. Um, it shows it in its own little way. Uh, farther out, the stronger the things get. So if we go back now, if we remove this, let's go through the little options here. Um, so waveform, we can go and there is waveform, there's luma, which is just the white, the, the brightness in the scene, and then luma, which is Y, and chroma, which is C. So this is kind of a correspondence of the brightness and the color in the scene. As you can see, when we move over here, as we get into a lot more of the different colors, the blue kind of comes out, but the if we really take a notice, and this is what I was trying to you know, get over here when we were doing the curves, is if you notice all of the luma, the green here, is actually um, focused at basically below 80%, which is why affecting the bottom here does such a large thing and affecting anything up here doesn't do much because when we move this curve, all we're dragging is the stuff up here in the upper quadrant. So right here we get a little bit more and right here over here we get a little bit more but that's just because of the sun and the sky comes out here but the majority of this shot is below 80 percent and then the next one down is just with no chroma so it's just looking at the loom up here 
Then we can go in back into the parade, remove the waveform, and there's a couple things in the parade as well. So RGB, you can add, um, this is the brightness of the RGB, so brightness of the reds, brightness of the G greens, and then brightness of the blues right here. You can affect the brightnesses again in the curves over here. So if I probably drag this straight down, you can kind of notice that we almost pulled down the reds a little bit here and then kind of brought them back up, which is why it's kind of weird. Um, if we drag, maybe, yeah. So you can see as we drag this down, we actually just cap off the reds entirely right here. Let's see if we can't bring that back up now. And um, bring that over, yeah. Cool, okay. Um, and then the next one, is down in waveform. Then we have Luma. Um, my bad. Oops, whoops. We are in parade. Then we have YUV, and this is again the over here is the Luma, and then this, this is U and V, which is the chroma in the scene. Um, a mixture of the almost the magentas and the yellows here. Uh, they kind of just tell the exact same story, but in a different way. I've always used RGB to edit, but a lot of people in the past and some people that are new like to edit in this form. So this is um, cool that you can switch things into your form to edit in. Then this is just the exact same thing as the RGB white, but it's YUV white, which just shows the brightness of each one of these. And that about does it for the Lumetri Scopes. Lumetri Scopes is a great little panel so that you can essentially have a really good um a lot of statistics on your colors so you can correct your colors the way you want them and you can grade the, your footage the way you want them you can look at it and figure out what would do the most what would be too much stuff like that and it also helps um by allowing a computer to analyze it so your eyes aren't biasing the footage for correction purposes grading you can't really bias it because it is your artistic view however Correction, if you're trying to get it back to a neutral state, having these little tools over here will really help you figure out what you need to do to bring it back to that neutral state so that later on when you apply a color grade, it'll look like the rest of the footage. Thanks everyone for joining me on this tutorial on Lumetri Scopes. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you want to see more videos like this and Adobe-related content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And until next time, guys, see ya.